హలో టు ఎవ్రీ వన్ వెల్కమ్ టు ది కోర్స్ ఆన్ న్యూమెరికల్ లీన్ రాజ్ బ్రాండ్ అప్లికేషన్ టుడే వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు హ్యావ్ థర్టీ ఎయిత్ లెక్చర్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ కోర్స్ బిఫోర్ గోయింగ్ టు దిస్ లెక్చర్ లెట్ అస్ క్విక్లీ రికాల్ వాట్ వీ హ్యావ్ లర్న్ ఇన్ ది లాస్ట్ లెక్చర్ ఇఫ్ యూ రికాల్ క్విక్లీ వీ హ్యావ్ స్టార్టెడ్ ది ఐట్రేషన్ ప్రొసీజర్స్ how iteration procedures will give us the best approximation we have a direct methods like gaussian elimination lu decomposition and we have seen that these direct methods are applicable for system of equations to certain extent beyond that the direct methods will not be able to applicable and demands huge huge database in order to save the parameters depending on the size of the matrix so accordingly we have iteration methods in these iteration methods we have learned gauss jacobi method gauss seidel method successive over relaxation method based on the successive relaxation parameter and today we are going to learn a specialized method that is conjugate gradient method which is analogous to iterative procedure this method was originally developed by hastens and stifel in 1952 today is widely used to solve large and sparse symmetric positive definite systems the method is a krylov subspace method we will present this method as an optimization method before going to this method let us prove this theorem let a be a r of n or n be symmetric positive definite and let b belongs to r of n on define the quadratic function pi of z will be equal to 1 over 2 times of z transpose a z minus z transpose b then the minimizer z of pi of z is the solution of ax is equal to b in order to prove this let us consider phi z is equal to 1 over 2 times of z transpose a z minus z transpose ax that will be equal to 1 by 2 times of z transpose a z minus z transpose a x plus 1 by 2 times of x transpose a x minus 1 by 2 times of x transpose a x so that can be written as 1 by 2 times of z minus x all transpose times of a into z minus x minus 1 over 2 into x transpose ax note that z transpose ax will be equal to x transpose az since minus 1 over 2 x transpose ax is constant and pi z will be a minimized if z is equal to x so therefore we would be able to find out the value of x in such a way that minus 1 by 2 x transpose ax is constant and pi z will be minimized if z is equal to x there is a large number of iterative methods in the literature of optimization for solving this minimization problem for instance lenberger in 1973 and nosidal and right in 2006 
in these iterative methods the successive approximations x are computed recursively xk plus 1 is equal to xk plus alpha k times of p of k. So, you will have a iterative procedure xk plus 1 is equal to xk plus alpha k times of p of k, where the vectors p k are called the direction vectors, the vectors p k are called direction vectors and the scalars alpha k are chosen to minimize pi of p in the direction of p k. That is alpha k is chosen to minimize the function that is pi of alpha x of k plus alpha times of p of k. Let r k will be equal to b minus a x k. It will now be shown how alpha k and p k are chosen in the conjugate gradient method. The algorithm will be developed using the following facts. The residual vectors r k are orthogonal that is r k transpose r j will be equal to 0 for k greater than j. The direction vectors are a conjugate that is p k transpose a p j that is p k transpose a p j will be equal to 0 if k is greater than j. So, therefore, if k is greater than j then we could able to get the conjugate of the matrix A and determine the alpha k. From the recursive relation it follows that the residual vector R k must satisfy the recurrence relation that is since R k are orthogonal then we have R k transpose R k plus 1 will be equal to 0. Then R k transpose R k minus alpha k times of A p k will be equal to 0. So, which will give you alpha k is equal to R k transpose R k upon R k transpose A p k. Again, if you look at the directional vector p k and after updating, so you get the residual as p k plus 1 will be equal to r of k plus 1 plus beta k p of k from which it follows that that is r k transpose a p k will be equal to p k minus beta k minus 1 p k minus 1 old transpose multiplied with a p k will be equal to p transpose a k and p k. So, since as already you we have wrote a p k is orthogonal to p k minus 1. So, a p k is orthogonal to p k minus 1. Thus, we have the fraction like this alpha k is minus of r k transpose times of r k upon p k transpose a p k. So, this will be equivalent to norm of r k that is 2 norm upon p k transpose a p k. Determining p k since p k plus 1 is orthogonal to a p k we obtain from the updated value that is beta k is minus of a p k old transpose r k plus 1 that is minus of a p k old transpose r k plus 1 upon a p k transpose p of k. Again from recurrence relation of residual vectors we have a p k is equal to minus of 1 over alpha k times of r k plus 1 minus r k. 
Thus, substituting the values of alpha k and noting that r transpose k times of r k plus 1 will be equal to 0, then we get this expression that is beta k is equal to 1 over alpha k times of r k plus 1 minus r k, r k plus 1 minus r k whole transpose r k plus 1 upon p transpose k a p k. So, this will give you the fraction that is r transpose k plus 1 r k plus 1 upon r transpose k r k. So, this will give you the 2 norm that is norm of r k plus 1 2 upon r k 2 norm. And if you look at this algorithm, the classical conjugate gradient algorithm. So, it would be like this. The conjugate gradient algorithm is the input is you have that is A belongs to R of n over n symmetric positive definite matrix and B is R of n over n, n over 1. So, what is the output we do expect? Output would you expect is an approximate solution x of ax is equal to b. So, ax is equal to b. And in the step 1, choose an initial approximation x0 and a tolerance epsilon. So, epsilon is normally very small value 10 power minus 6, very small value. And we set the r0 is equal to b minus ax0 r naught is b minus a x naught that is the residual and in step 2 for i is equal to 0, 1, 2 etc. w is equal to a p i compute the step length alpha i. So, alpha i is equal to that is r i 2 2 upon p i transpose w. So, update the iterates. So, we update the iterates that is x of i plus 1 will be equal to x of i plus alpha i p i right. So, we update the iterates x i plus 1 is equal to x i plus alpha i p i where alpha is already known and again we update the residual r i plus 1. So, r i plus 1 will be equal to r i minus alpha i times of w. And we test the convergence that is norm of r i plus 1 that is 2 norm is greater than or equal to epsilon and we continue. And beta i is equal to norm of r i plus 1 norm of r i 2. So, we update the directional vector that is p of i plus 1 equivalent to r of i plus 1 plus beta i p i. p i plus 1 is equal to r of i plus 1 plus beta i p i. And you can see this example, you have a matrix of 3 over 3 and it is uh, 3 rows, 1 columns. Look at this, we start with a vector that is x of 0 will be equal to 0, 0, 0 transpose. So, what is this p naught? p naught is r naught that is b minus a x of 0. So, this is what a x naught you do get as 7, 7, 7. And for i is equal to 0, w is equal to a p naught, you get a matrix like this. And alpha naught is equal to norm of r naught 2, 2 upon p naught transpose w. So, you get a matrix like this. And this is nothing but x naught plus alpha naught times of p naught. So, which will be given by this matrix. Similarly, when you compute this r1, r1 is equal to r naught minus alpha naught times of w you get a matrix like this minus of point 0, 0, 0, 0021 minus of point 0, 0, 0021 minus of point double zero two one and beta will be like this 
beta naught is 9 into 10 power minus 8, very small value and P1 is equal to R1 plus beta naught P naught, P1 is equal to R1 plus beta naught P naught. So, that would be given by minus of point 0 0.0021, minus of point 0 0.0021, minus of point 0 0 0.0021. So, for i is equal to 1, so you will have w is equal to a p 1. So, which will be equivalent to minus of point 0 0.0147, minus of point 0 0.0147, minus of 0 0.0147 where alpha 1 turns out to be 0.1429. Similarly, alpha 2 is equal to, similarly x2 is equal to, that is x2 is equal to x1 plus alpha 1 p1, x2 is equal to x1 plus alpha 1 p1. So, this x2 turns out to be 111. Then, Krylov subspace properties of the conjugate gradient iteration method. From the description of the conjugate gradient algorithm and the discussion proceeding in the following can be proved like this. That is conjugate T E iterates over the Krylo subspace that is K of K is equal to span of X1, X2, X of K and span of P naught, P1, Pk minus 1. So, that is span of that is R naught, R1, Rk minus 1. That is span of B times of AB, A power K minus 1 times of B. Convergence of the conjugate gradient method. In the absence of round of errors, the conjugate gradient method should converge in no more than n iterations. In the absence of round of errors, the conjugate gradient method should converge in no more than n iterations. In the following theorem says. So, what is this conjugate gradient theorem says? The conjugate gradient algorithm converges in more than n steps. What is the proof is? We know that Rn is orthogonal to Rn is orthogonal to R0. That is Rn is inner product R1 is 0, Rn, Rn minus 1 is 0. Again from the above Krylov subspace identities, Again, from the above Krylov subspace identities, we have R0, R1, Rn minus 1 form a basis of Rn. Since Rn is orthogonal to this entire basis, since Rn is orthogonal to this entire basis, we conclude that Rn is equal to 0, that is En is equal to 0, which means x of n is equal to x. Minimizing of the a norm error. Minimizing phi z is equivalent to minimizing the a norm of the error as shown below. Define the function that is norm of a by that is norm of x of a is x transpose a x under square root. Then it can be verified that this function is a norm on r over, r over n and is called the a norm. So, it is analogous to you know 1 nor, 2 nor, infinity nor and so on and so forth and define the error e is equal to z minus x. Then we will have phi of z is 1 by 2 times of norm of e to a minus 1 by 2 times of norm of 2 a. Since 1 over 2 times of norm of x of 2 is constant, 
minimizing phi z is equivalent to minimizing norm of e of 2 of a. So, now let us look at into the rate of convergence of the conjugate gradient method. The rate of convergence of the conjugate gradient method is determined by the distribution of the eigenvalues of a. The rate of convergence of the conjugate gradient method is determined by the distribution of eigenvalues of a. The following is an important result in this context. So, for example, in the green bomb 1997 and uh, you know reference is page 50, 51, you will find out this convergence of the conjugate gradient method. Also, it is interesting to see how actually the error bound for the conjugate gradient method that is e k is equal to x minus x k at the kth iteration is related to the initial vector as so e naught is equal to x minus x naught. So, that is norm of e k of a norm of e naught of a is less than or equal to minimization of p k and maximum of i minus 1 i minus 2 p k lambda i where lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n are the eigenvalues of A and the minimum taken over all polynomials p k x of degree less than or equal to k with p k naught is equal to 1. If A has k distinct eigenvalues, if A has k distinct eigenvalues, then the conjugate gradient method converges in at most k steps. If you look at this theorem, if A has k distinct eigenvalues, then the conjugate gradient method converges in at most k steps. So, what would be the proof of this? Let p k of x is the product of pi i is equal to 1 to k 1 minus x by lambda i. Then p k of x is equal to 0 at x is equal to lambda i, i is equal to 1 to k. The following well known result shows how the ratio of the largest eigenvalues equal to the smallest eigenvalue influences the rate of convergence when nothing is known about the clustering. So, the influence rate of convergence when nothing is known about the, this clustering. So, theorem is if we have this norm of x k minus x a will be less than or equal to 2 into alpha k that is norm of x naught minus x a norm or you can write it as norm of e k a upon norm of e naught of a is less than or equal to 2 alpha k where alpha is equal to that is alpha is equal to square root of k minus 1 upon k plus 1 and k is equal to that is condition number of a2 which is equal to norm of a2 norm of a inverse of 2 that is 2 norm which will be equal to lambda n upon lambda 1. Here lambda n and lambda 1 are the largest and smallest eigenvalues of the symmetric positive definite matrix A. Lambda n and lambda 1 are the largest and smallest eigenvalues of the symmetric positive definite matrix. Note that the eigenvalues of A are all positive that is alpha is equal to 0 when condition number A is equal to 1. So, when alpha approaches to 1, so condition number of A also approaches to infinity. This large condition number is slows the slower the rate of convergence. Now, let us look at into the solving the indefinite symmetric systems using conjugate gradient type methods that is minimum of residues and symmetric LQ methods. The conjugate gradient method was derived under the assumption that the matrix A is symmetric and positive definite. So, this is very very important. When the matrix A is symmetric, you could able to write this rows as a columns and vice versa and it is positive definite means all the eigenvalues are greater than 0. The positive definiteness of A ensures the minimization property of the conjugate gradient method. In case A is symmetric indefinite, the minimization property can no longer be ensured. 
So if the matrix A is symmetric and indefinite, indefinite, the minimization property can no longer be ensured. In such case, two well-known alternatives we can use due to Pag and Sonder 1975 are the minimization and the symmetric LQ methods. That is minimum residue is minimum residue method aims at minimizing this value that is A of xk minus b with respect to 2 naught by extracting information from the symmetric Lankos algorithm. So you see Lankos algorithm. It can be shown that norm of ax k minus b 2 norm will be equivalent to that is norm of dk plus 1 that is tau of k yk 2 norm minus r naught times of 2 norm times of e1 into 2 norm where dk plus 1 will be equivalent to diagonal of r naught 2 norm r1 r2 rk tk is the k plus 1th k tridiagonal matrix obtained after k steps of the symmetric Lankos method yk is the solution of the projected problem obtained after k steps of the Lankos method. So as we see that finding out the residue at every time step is very very important. So this yk satisfies this equation that is tk of yk is norm of r naught to norm into e1. So the above is a minimum norm least square problem can be solved using given rotations as in the case of the generalized the residues method. So essentially the conclusion is if the error becoming smaller and smaller that means we are ensuring the or we are very close to the best approximation property which is being desired. So today what we learned is we learned about a new method called conjugate gradient method and its applications. So thank you very much for hearing my lecture. So once again thank you.